So I know what some of you may be thinking, like, where is the video from James? Why hasn't he posted a video for over 12 hours? What's happened to him? Well, I, you can guess that I'm not exactly in Siam Rip anymore. Let me just swivel the camera around and this is where I am. It's been quite a long day that, oh, let me just get this straight again. It's been quite a long day. I woke up at 5.15 and then had a cup of coffee. Why did I wake up so early? Because a Passat, which is a tuk-tuk, which is a free wheel taxi service, you know, like the Indian um, uh, taxis that uh, took me to the airport in Siam Rip. Now, he picked me up at 6.30 usually takes an hour and it was and I will post a video of the actual trip from where I left in Siam Rip, Cambodia to the airport what the new airport is like now I have done a video of that before but the good news is there is a Burger King now hooray so if you're really hungry there is something to eat and took a ATR 7-2 which is a twin propped aeroplane to Bangkok, took about an hour. Um, immigration was well, awful. It, it was not, I won't say awful, it actually moved quite steadily, but it took about, you would say, maybe 50 minutes to get through all of immigration. I don't have a global pass or anything, and I don't think even Thailand had a global pass, but I sort of like really missed and um, because last time I was here, I was on a business class ticket going to the United Kingdom or to Bangkok, not here directly. And um, you went through all the fast track things. But this is just a cheapy ticket. This is sort of um, a, a, a time in Pattaya. And then the taxi picked me up and about an hour down to here. So the time of recording is actually about seven o'clock in the evening which means i've been up for already 14 hours at seven o'clock this is yes this is coffee chat oh um, siri is getting very excited i will just turn the siri off it is coffee chat but i'm on the balcony of my three star um, three star hotel five nights in the high season no breakfast i don't usually have breakfast in these kind of hotels um, it costs about two hundred and five dollars which is actually pretty good and it's the old hotel which I stayed in so many times and I don't know why I look at other hotels it's like 32 <coughs> square meters the bed is so comfortable it's just so comfortable and out of all the other beds I've stayed in in this city in different three four-star hotels this one's the um, this one is the best. You have a small balcony, it's very quiet, it's moments away to the beach there and then you can actually get something called a barked bus. This is like a pickup truck where people can sit behind and it's sheltered like that and it can take you up and down the main part of Pattaya. There are other barked buses all around. And I, uh, so that was the majority of my day and I've been shopping well. I went to KFC. Um, there is KFC in Siam Rip in Cambodia, uh, but it's not the best in the world. It's sort of like KF Rat or KF Pigeon. It's just not nice. And so I scoffed my face with that one and then I picked up some bargains. Some things in Cambodia are really expensive and in Thailand it's sort of like half the price. So I thought I picked up four packs of toothpaste and I bought some toothbrushes so I can buy three for just over three dollars but in Cambodia one would cost three dollars so picked up those got some bubble bath because the luxury of this um, hotel it does have a bath and I love baths in my home in Cambodia I just have showers so to sit in a bath was absolutely delightful and I did actually have a cup of coffee when I was in the uh, bath and what am I doing tonight? Well, I am hungry, so after making this video and posting it, I am going up the road and I'm going to go to a place where they call the Aeroplane 
food place and is, um, I'm going to order two lots of pad thai. I am going to video it. I have been there before and then I'm going to scoff my face with that and maybe buy one or two beers and just enjoy sitting on the balcony this evening or watching a bit of TV. It's actually quite fun because at home I just have online television like Netflix, Amazon and Apple TV+. Plus. But here it's got like Paramount, Fox, HBO, Cinemax and Discovery and National Geographic and even your favourite news channel, yes the BBC and along, um, I've just skimmed through the TV and a load of Chinese TV stations like CGTV1 and the English speaking one CGTN or CG or C or CG something like that that's there so there's lots of entertainment I, I'm going to show you the the room in a minute in a bit more detail and for five nights it costs like just over 200 American dollars which is about $40 a night and this is peak season this is high season so one lucky to get a room and it's just I would say for a three-star hotel out of all the hotels I've stayed in this city before, and I've stayed in lots of hotels, this is the best one. Um, it's just perfect for me. I go this way, that way, you can't see my hand. Yep. Um, there are two kind of 7-Elevens. I go that way, There's, uh, and this is like two, three hundred meters away up that way. There's a big shopping center and there's lots of uh, restaurants and food and the street food to eat uh, as well. So it's just really convenient and you don't get intimidated. Some people do and I do is when you do walk up some other roads closer to the more city center, there's got all the go-go bars and everything and you just feel embarrassed or like uh, walking up because you don't want the attention of, hi, how are you? Oh, you're so handsome, etc. like that. You just want to get somewhere. So you don't get this on this soy. Opposite, there's our two massage places, the normal kind of massage. And maybe um, if I can, I will go for a foot massage 100% because it only costs like 200 baht, which will be, or well, let's say 170 baht is five dollars so it's just a bit more than that for one hour and this is a massage this is a foot massage and near enough wherever you go in thailand you get a foot massage they're really nice i have had one experience in chiang mai which is in the north of um i was going to say china in thailand where i did have a foot massage and actually i had a limp for a day i thought that my foot really hurt but that was like a rarity and these are just fantastic massages it sort of like relaxes you your feet feel oh just great your whole body feels great with that so definitely for that i am going to go and buy a cappuccino machine a cheapo one that will cost something like 80 or 90 dollars um, here's the thing with it i did buy a really expensive one an italian one and within two years it broke i did take it to be repaired there is one repair shop but they couldn't really repair it and it cost me 25 dollars for well nothing but the one that i got in November 2022 that stopped working but it only cost 80 or 90 dollars but so for two years I can get two coffee machines and that will uh, or cappuccino machines compared to the 500 one they last the same time basically so I can actually save money with that and I do like coffee I just really like cappuccino yeah espresso and then uh, pouring the hot milk or the foamy creamy milk on the top of that um i do have regular coffee it's okay but i just like the cappuccino and so to have it at home that's why i'm going to buy it what else i do actually want to buy some blue running shoes i really don't know why i just want the color blue i do have some really nice ones from a company called bata batter i will buy those tomorrow and maybe one or two presents for beautiful soapy back in cambodia maybe some dresses or something i'm not too sure um with that um so it will be a belated birthday present because it was her birthday at the beginning of the year anything else happening
I did on the aeroplane. The aeroplane was Bangkok Air. I will show it tomorrow. I had um, the person sitting next to me. Usually when I get on an aeroplane, you just think near enough, say hi to the person next to you and that's it. But it was a really great chat and the uh, air journey was only one hour. And he was a senior student in Houston. So hi, Charlie. Hope you're well. Um, and maybe you will be watching this when you do get home to the United States of America. And we had some very interesting um, chats about, well, we talked about Xi Jinping, we talked about the Belt and Road Initiative. He's a debater in his high school. And uh, we talked about uh, what is there to do actually in Houston. Now, I have been to Houston. Well, I'll rephrase that. I've been through Houston a long time ago, way back in 1989, when I was driving a, uh, they call a drive away. Basically, it's a car that needed to be delivered from Los Angeles to Miami. So you get a free car for nine, 10 days. All you need to do is gasoline. And I drove through Houston and I remember actually seeing a roundabout and that was quite rare. <laughs> I thought in America at that time, because I think that was the very first one I saw on my road trip. My road trip in, actually started in New York City and we picked up a car in New Jersey just outside NYC and then we drove there to Los Angeles and then we didn't actually really like Los Angeles. Sorry if there's any people there here from LA and so we did the opposite and we drove all the way to uh, Fort Lauderdale where we did have some friends who could actually help us with accommodation etc etc. It's a very interesting road trip so coast to coast, coast to coast in about three weeks. I was only like 20 years old so I couldn't even drink a beer and I did actually have my 21st celebration actually in Fort Lauderdale. It was in the Holiday Inn and it was a gay bar. I didn't know, my friend and I really didn't know it was an actual uh, gay bar but this very big German came up to me um, maybe like 10 minutes when we're in there and said, I like you. I went, oh thank you very much and I, we sort of gathered <laughs> it was a homosexual bar not really my friend and i cup of tea but it was quite funny um, with that and that was my first legal drink in america way back in 1989 when i was like 21 years old oh so innocent so regardless of that it was really interesting to have a chat with this friend from houston what did he want to do he's actually very um worldly with knowledge it was first time to asia on this school trip and again the the flight flew by and said uh, he said if you come to houston there's lots of food lots of spanish there he wants actually to learn spanish obviously because it's in texas which is right next door to mexico and there's lots of um, mexican people there spanish food so that was his um, thing that he would like to do just so interesting to have a, a great chat and quite open-minded you know and i said what do you think of joe biden for example and he gave me an honest opinion then i said what do you think of trump and he and we actually agreed that, that trump was a great president why because he didn't need the money now most presidents and prime ministers there's an old saying work four years of your life and you never need to work again Trump was very different, so different in fact, because he didn't need the money. He was already one of the world's richest men, a billionaire, etc. So, um, and we talked about that a little bit more. And it was great to talk to the younger generation who's actually experienced how it is in the United States. He, um, I would say that Charlie, his name was, um, his father or his family own a really big ranch. I could imagine they talked about horses and um, and how um, he loves to do that. And his father's sort of like in England and a businessman uh, related to tourism. And it was like very interesting just to see the different parts of life. Having a YouTube channel is great because you get lots of comments and sometimes you may get a friend that you start to chat to. But just on a, uh, and usually the friend would be about your generation. You could say 50, 60 years old. But it was great to have a very intellectual conversation with Charlie, 
with that on the airplane and we could have like talked for hours and hours and hours but we had to go through immigration or he was separated into his school group i had to go into the um, flock of sheep trying to get through immigration but while i was in immigration there was a guy in front of me and he said you're a youtuber i went yeah i'm famous wow <laughs> it was actually so amazing that uh, just I've only got 32,000 subscribers. Now, if I had a million subscribers, that would be nice. And don't forget to um, click the share button, click the link button, click the um, subscribe button and tell your friends and thumbs up and say, leave some wonderful comments. They say, James is really good at talking for England. If Rabbiting On was in the Olympic Games, I'm sure he would win the gold medal with no break. This video is not edited in any way, shape or form. Basically, I'm going to, after this, just um, push it over to my computer and then push it and then push it onto um, YouTube. I'm not even sure of the title of this video. I was thinking um, two countries in 12 hours or some exciting thing. I know some people would say clickbait, but I haven't got there. Many people say on YouTube, you do the thumbnail and the title before you make the video. And I sort of sometimes do, but I thought, and just to do this update, because I know you guys are missing me. I can feel it. I can feel the passion coming through the internet waves. Yes, definitely there. Um, this video now is 16 minutes long. If you can, and if you're still here, give it a rainbow because that would be amazing if anyone's listened to me uh, waffle on for uh, this amount of time. So all my adventures while I'm in Thailand or getting to Thailand from yesterday and adventures, I do have my small little camera and I will um, try to show you some things different. Um, I don't really want to go down the streets where all the um, where you can find 20 wives in 20 minutes if you get my drift like that i've done that before maybe i'll show a glimpse if i have to go down that street but i want to try and find um i want to spend some time in jontium which is maybe 20 minutes away it's a beautiful beach place and it's just so quiet to so quiet compared to patia and many foreigners or expats do live there because it's a lot cheaper you have the beach view, you have all the restaurants. You would need, if you do live in uh, Thailand or you live in a place like this, you do need a little motorbike. And I'm not too sure how about to get the license. If you have a motorbike license already, then bam, it's okay. But if you don't, the police do stop you here and they do have, um, police checks and you would need to bring out the registration of the vehicle and you would need to show your driving license if you don't bam and like the rest of the world you should wear a helmet but you will see uh, like in Cambodia like here like in other places they some people don't and it's sort of like gambling with money on um, is the police going to catch you or not there yeah. I saw a, a farang what they call um, the people like me people like me uh, foreigners here the Caucasian people they call them farangs and when I was coming into the city center there was a guy maybe like 60 years old big smile on his face no helmet and if you do get caught with the police it's usually something like a 500 baht fine which is well 35 baht is ten dollars so let's say 15 for argument's sake um, with that and that's it but $15 here is actually you know, your food for the whole day so that's what you'll be losing and I would say most people here possibly don't quote me on this um, would have sort of like a a pension of about 2000 US so you can live very comfortably you can go out once in a while and there's a big expat community here uh, so you won't be unless you're uh, introverted you won't be um, without friends and there's always something to do usually it's to do with beer as well is uh, the beer here compared to Cambodia is ridiculously expensive I can go to a bar in Cambodia in the Siam Rip and in the afternoon for example or even in the evening and drink a beer 
quite nice beer for 50 to 75 um, cents, American cents. Here, you go to a bar, you're looking at a minimum of about, you could say, $2, sometimes less, sometimes more. Now, you may go, wow, that is so cheap. But in Asia, <laughs> it's a different mentality. Because I've lived in Asia for so long, and I live in Cambodia, which is a great place to live as a retiree. But when it's like, a, let's say, $2 for a beer, you go, oh, okay, it's very expensive. And then you get into the old, uh, habit, which I'm sure some people don't like. They say, oh, in Cambodia, it's only... Um, to, um, sorry, 60 cents, then their simple answer, well, why are you here? Go back to Cambodia. And I would absolutely agree with them. Just keep quiet. Um, when I checked into the hotel, now most people do tap and pay, tap and pay with their debit card or their credit card. And I saw that their machine had tap and pay, but put it in, didn't accept it. Then I had to go and put it through the swipe or insert it into the machine. And eventually it did work. I, I authorized the card to work in, in Thailand, so it's basically I can pay for the hotel. It's not that much, you say $200. So here's a question. Um, what could you get if you're in Houston, New York, Las Vegas, Chicago, San Francisco? What kind of hotel could you get for $40 a night? Is it going to be a shithole, excuse the very bad English, or um, ridden with fleas that you possibly see in a movie, or could you find a bargain if you know what to look for? Lots of questions. So, I was thinking about doing this live, uh, but I don't know if the internet would work out here, because it's so nice. It's just, this is the peak season, so like 7 o'clock or 7.30 in the evening, and it's it's warm but it's not annoyingly warm and there's a breeze coming in from the gulf of thailand there which is just makes it um, perfect i think i'm going to go and get my noodles and my pad thai and i may get some beer and i may get some snacks from 7-eleven and i will wish everyone a happy day now if charlie is listening hey there we go show this video to your friends you are now a superstar in Houston, Texas. Yeehaw! This is the thing that I was thinking. When we think about a different place and we haven't been there or hadn't been there for a long time, what do you actually think of it? I've, there was one YouTuber called Noel Phillips and he does these flight videos or flight review videos around the world. And he moved from the United Kingdom to Houston he, because it's always been a dream of his. I don't know the legality and how he got the visas, etc., etc. But I got, if you talk to me about San Francisco, there's many things I could actually do there without going on the internet and searching. If I go to New York, um, there's so many things I could do as a uh, to go to a tourism attraction like go to the rock which I haven't been to and I really should so going to the top of the Rockefeller um, building and you have to go there between four and six o'clock so as the sun goes down and a youtuber did this it's called the Mac master by the way yep the Mac master English guy but he used to live in New York so when I you think about these places so what can you do in Houston and what I think may be completely wrong and maybe uh, is the word biased, maybe, is, well, it's full of oil fields. Everyone in the 10 gallon hat, someone driving the huge Cadillac or the really massive Dodge Ram 8, 10, 12 liter uh, pickup truck. Now that's being a stereotype and he actually just said if you do come then there's so many museums to see there's great food there's a great social life and he even quoted that some people in the united states his home don't, uh, his home country don't even know about how wonderful houston is because they would usually for example if you flew on virgin atlantic uh, you would possibly have to stop in Houston or British Airways to stop in Houston to get to Las Vegas. So it's only a stopover point. And it is an international hub. I, so um, his flight in a couple of days when his school goes back to um, Texas, it's from 
Taipei direct yep yes 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 direct to Houston you would expect that it would be um, Bangkok to Los Angeles and then go through immigration and then it'll be a domestic flight from Los Angeles to Houston maybe I'm being really naive and I just don't know about um, this but I used to fly in quite a lot and I've never actually been in the city centre apart from in 1989 when I drove through Houston I should have really spent some time there and I'm maybe one day who knows I will uh, do a package tour of the United States but that would cost me an arm and a leg so talking about fi finance if anyone wants to support that trip then you can do it through super thanks you can do it on patreon you can do by joining a man but joining the membership program now usually the money goes to the kitty cats and usually with that possibly uh, the total thing with YouTube I get on average about per month is about 200 us which is perfect for my kitty cats called tokyo and pickle if you scroll through my channel you will see one or two videos about my lovely uh, lovely cats who are just happy um in our house and happy to be in cambodia and happy like it's like a happy family yeah? um, if you're young don't have kids have cats they they love you unconditionally I am rambling on. I'm not too sure how long I should make this video. Maybe about another um, couple of minutes. So tomorrow, uh, whenever that is, I will, or the next video is what I videoed today. And I will take the the camera, the small mini camera, uh, to the street market so you can see it. I have done it before, but um, this is going but it's been sort of like in early evening when it's just dusk I am going to do this at night time so I don't know how it's going to pick up and I'm going to walk down a street which is dark Ooh, yeah. but it's perfectly I just haven't had any problems here at all you just have to be aware like in most cities most countries around the world you do get the unscrupulous person who loves to um, pickpocket you or just to annoy you so he can maybe you would give him like five dollars or ten bucks please just go away and leave me then he's happy and moves on to his next victim but um, this alleyway I've never had any problems with in Thailand an alleyway is called a soy s-o-i so if you are here and they say oh you need to go to soy 5 then it's an alleyway it's just a smaller road cars do go up and down it sometimes and um, it's like on the soy on the left hand side would be the odd numbers and on the right hand side they would be the even numbers not always don't get me quote but sometimes it can be like that exactly like when you go on a ship if you're on the port side it would be your room number would be 101 but if you're on the starboard side it would be 102 i think Maybe I'm making a mess of that, but this is coffee chat and you can correct me anytime. So I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to finish my coffee. I'm going to post this video and then I'm going to go out and get some food. And that will be about it for me in this city. I don't think I'm going to go out. I'm just a bit too tired because it's been quite a long day. And I will wish everyone a happy day wherever you are. God bless all. Let's leave it at there. Bye-bye for now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cheerio.